What's up guys, it's your boy Metriaptor, also known as Luxatus Patella. Welcome to another part of my Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets walkthrough series. Last time we got the final ingredient for the Polyjuice Potion. As you can see, we are now transformed into Goyle. So now we can actually infiltrate the Slytherin common room. But before we're gonna do that, I would like to mention a couple of things. One, it's another one of those days where the game decides to sort of delete itself. Fraps is also not having a good day, so there might be some lag spikes here and there. Uh, second, it is uh, what I said last time about deducting the house points of Slytherin. Well, if we go to the menu and go to our points, we can see that uh, Gryffindor has 486 points. Slytherin now has 540. This is what I've shown you last time. Slytherin is now in the lead. This may also mean that we, may not, we, we might not be able to recover from... Um, from the fact that Slytherin is actually now taking the lead and it might actually expand uh, the difference of house points between the number one and the number two spots, which may mean ultimately that Harry is not allowed anymore to go into the bonus beam room. Boo hoo. But like I said, we're gonna try and change that um, with the upcoming challenges and stuff that we still have to do. We're still gonna try to win the house cup, but it may just mean that. We are not eligible anymore to do the bonus beam room challenge when it comes along because once Slytherin is in the lead, oh boy, they rack up a lot of points. Um, but like I said, um, this was actually concerning the uh, trick that I mentioned about deducting the house points for Slytherin by actually bumping into a prefect all the time as you are Goyle. Um, this actually doesn't work for the PC version because there is no prefect to be found within the Sliver and Common Room, at least not to my knowledge. I've searched everywhere, couldn't find anything. But then I actually dug a little deeper into this and it seems that the PlayStation versions are actually a little bit different. Um, and it actually means that you actually have to distract all the prefects and then you have to sneak into the... Uh, common room or something I don't know but it means that it there is probably a bit of a mishap between you know they say like oh you can actually deduct the house points in the PC version well it's actually the PS or the PS2 version I don't know so sorry there is no way not that I've known to actually deduct the house points of Slytherin as much as I want to but uh, I guess we just have to live through it I guess so let's go back to the gameplay shall we because, well, we're still gonna go to the Sliver and Common Room. We're still gonna get all the secrets in there. And, uh, yeah. Let's just hope we'll get some more, I don't know, some more wizard cards, some more beans. And let's make sure we do not get caught. Also, enjoy the unique BGM. So one of the questions I get asked frequently is to actually show all the unique dialogue that you can have while you're playing as Harry or as Goyle or whatever. Um, the thing is actually is that there's no such unique dialogue so far while you're just roaming around Hogwarts. I mean, I can bump into this guy from Gryffindor. I mean, we, we could. What does he say? I beg your pardon? Uh, you see, they're, they're all rude. I'm not non-magical, Boom, but I'm still afraid of the air. Actually, the things that they do talk about are more story-related, as in how far you've actually progressed through the story. So yeah. Must be on my way. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, well, hello. Pardon me. I'm I'm from Slytherin too. Watch where you're going. Dude, respect. First time I've ever seen you alone, Goyle. Okay, now this is actually one of the uh, lines that's also said um, within the Slytherin common room. So it's interesting though that it's been said here. I beg your pardon. Uh, don't care. You're from Hufflepuff. What's where you're going? Okay, I'm clumsy, I know it. Now, another question may be, well, you're pretending you're Goyle, but you're actually Harry, so you know the password for the Gryffindor common room. And actually, it would have been interesting if they did something like that. Um, once you're actually here, you try to interact with the fat lady, you cannot. Which is uh, unfortunate. It would have been funny. I mean, think about it. If you were actually still able to actually enter the Gryffindor common room, you pretend you're a Goyle, you talk to the prefect of Gryffindor, and you lose points for Slytherin. I mean, come on. Isn't that an easy way? Game, you should have allowed this. You really should have allowed this. I mean, then again, the fat lady will be like, wait, how do you know the password of Gryffindor? But then again, if she knows, then for some way she could probably alert 
I don't know, maybe Professor Snape or something? And then Professor Snape will be like, minus five points for Slytherin. Actually, no, I think Snape wouldn't like to actually deduct house points for Slytherin. He's probably like, nope, I'm not going to deduct house points for my favorite house. Nope. Not going to do that. Okay, so maybe there's a little bit of sense in that. Those Cornish pixies that Lockhart let loose are all over the place now. I even had one caught in my hair. Ugh. Crazy, crazy stuff. So yeah, we have to go back to the dungeons. And again, that unique BGM, but it's all about to change because we're gonna go to the dungeons and the BGM is gonna switch. We also get a cutscene. So now we can actually understand how Harry actually infiltrates the Slytherin common room. Okay, that was short. But let's follow this dude, see what he's up to. Pure blood. What's the password? But I can use that to get into the Slytherin common room. Again, the way Goyle talks, it's just amazing. Um, but yeah, pure blood. Of course, the whole mud blood thing in this, uh, in this game and in this uh, part of Harry Potter saga. Is, is it really coincidence? Who knows? Pure blood. And again, this is one of those areas you can only enter once, so better make the most out of it. But let's continue. So here we are in the Slytherin common room. Actually, no, we are not in the common room. We are just in just a <gasps> sub area. <gasps> and kind of thinking like, whoa, this is kind of elaborate. How, how so are we not in the Slytherin common area? I mean, think about it. If we want to go to the Gryffindor common area, we just have to go to the portrait of the fat lady. It's not that far. We just say a password and then we can go through. So why is it that the Slytherin one has to be so damn elaborate? Oh well. Ah, let's uh, cast Defendo, which is invisible for some reason, so let's try to do it again. Ah. There we go. Also, it's pretty funny that some of the gnomes are actually smaller than the, well, I think regular sized ones. Frax was Fraps was just pooping for a little bit, but it seems to be okay. The problem is actually is that um, I have noticed that Fraps is actually just getting really, and I mean absolutely really crazy when um, when I'm actually just exploring for here. For some reason, it's just that Fraps is just saying no. But anyway, I just dispose of these uh, little gnomes. So apologies if there's going to be some lag spike here and there. It's just this is just not a good day for Fraps, like like I said before. But still, I want to record. Here we go. And now we have to stand in the middle of the compass yet again. And then once again, the room turns around. And cutscene. Have fun, Goyle. <laughs> Wow, what a dick. But then again, he's from Slytherin. Aren't they all dicks? So anyways, pretty important that you actually cast Flippendo because then this allows for the uh, reveal of the first secret. We're gonna go save it up though. So yeah, what is funny from that cutscene is that this one little puddle of goo is actually uh, still there because the Slytherin dude actually missed to cast the Scourge Bell on it, which is unfortunate, but it has happened before in earlier play runs of mine, so it's good that uh, I can actually show it through Fraps, so this is actually a common occurrence, it's not really something that happens uh, rarely. Also, you may have noticed this is actually a jump cut, because, well, Fraps does not like this area at all. This is like my 25th time 
uh, trying to record this and I'm actually not kidding and some strange things that happened between recordings suddenly I got extra disk space on my hard drive because I don't know the game crashed and as a result I got more disk space so what the hell was going on I do not know but hopefully the game will actually run smoothly now because I'm still frapsing at 30 frames per second which is amazing so I'm kind of worrying about the performance because of course I want to cover this area with a nice frame rate so it's actually enjoyable to watch. I mean I could go through the area with two fraps per second which makes it unplayable and uh, yeah I mean hopefully we can do this. Um, so this is the bridge that actually because there's a pressure plate right there so there is uh, the bridge but it doesn't want to uh, connect or be stuck with, uh, with the goo with the scourge goo and this is the first secret as i've already shown now it's actually open so yes we get that nice distinct sound get rid of this bit and let's try to do this so there's a chest a couple of beans Alrighty, eh, nothing too special but we can push uh these plates out of the wall with flipendo then we can create some more platforms. You already see that chest. Just, just chilling over there, just doing nothing. And uh, yeah, let's try to do this. So we have to go and do some more platforming. And jump over here and jump over there. Now this is not a secret, but it is quite hard to actually get there. And in this treasure chest is a silver wizard card. Now, a moment of silence, please, for one of the best audio cues or audio files from the game, which is Goyle trying to climb up something. <laughs> That's just amazing. And again... But yeah, that's uh, pretty strange. But yeah, here we go. Still frapsing at 30 frames per second. That's good. Uh, Castle Pendo. And of course, in almost every action adventure game with a bit of platforming in it, we must have moving platforms. And if you miscalculate your jump or your timing is off, well, oh boy, enjoy a bottomless pit because that's, that's what's gonna happen to you. Okay, nervous part for me, because, well, Fraps tried to crack on itself here, but now it seems to be relatively okay. So that's good. Um, so let's get rid of all the goo. And let's get rid of all the goo here. And here, most importantly. Now we can cast a pendo, and then this will happen. It's actually a dispenser of goo. And this will actually create three, well actually in this case two new puddles of goo. And yes, you can actually repeat this, so you can actually dispense more goo, but uh, they don't get bigger. Like the, the, the goo piles don't get any bigger, which eh, I always like to test it. So it can cast Lumos, which basically does nothing else but to uh, drop ourselves down. But it's, it's okay. Now we can pull up the bridge and then you see the bridge actually gets stuck uh, thanks to the goo but of course me being a Slytherin dick well I have to pretend I'm from Slytherin so I'm just like screw you the next person who wants to join the Slytherin common room a uh, little bit of a bug again but the next person who wants to go to the Slytherin common room suck it you have to go through all that shenanigans all over again there you go, just to make things even worse. <laughs> just a little personal note. I mean, as I'm just tipping over these cauldrons, I am happy because I've never reached this far with fraps. I'm serious. I am happy right now. I am pretty content. Hopefully we can maintain this nice frame rate. And yeah, let's continue through this level. Ah, pixies. Uh, okay, well these pixies are having a good time, I guess. Let's just cast Lumos and see what happens. We get a cutscene and allows us the next area. 
Now you might be thinking, ooh, this is a secret. Go there, Lux. I mean, come on, let's discover it. This is not a secret. You're actually supposed to go through this um, because it's actually part of the map. Because if you don't go through this, then yeah, well, if you have to go through this in order actually to progress because this is actually the way to the common room. But uh, we're not going there because that's that will be way too early. First off, we are have to do some more platforming. Oh yes, lovely platforming. Try to enjoy that. Well, we have to cast Lumos because there's a Lumos area right over there. Lovely. So we have to cast the Pendo here and there. Open the chest. It's just such a nice party full of beans. They all have beans. It's better than nothing, I guess. 1400 beans and over. That's good. That's pretty good. Alright, so let's go back. Of course, this time the game is not so uh, generous. It's like, oh, you want to go back? You want to go back? Oh, well, I guess you just have to hmm, just just parkour your way back with Goyle. And Goyle has so many problems when he's trying to jump over things. Alrighty. We're going to cast Lumos again. We're going to walk. Uh, you may hear that the Lumos area, the next hidden Lumos area, is already discovered. It also has a distinct sound. I'm trying to get rid of that pixie, though. For some reason, um, when I'm actually recording or playing this game, it seems that the pixies are always like, there are always two pixies which are just like on top of each other, or actually just no clipping on each other. Because every time I try to get rid of one pixie, there's always the second.